Okay, good morning to you. Here is the session for Donegal Dragon. Slightly later than published. Been a bit busy actually with all this online stuff. Anyway, let's have a think about it. So, general warm up, standard warm up. Um, I'm using star jumps. You can use a variety of things. You may have your own club warm up. The reason I like star jumps is because you have a whole body warm up and you're not just working in that frontal plane, but if you use different variations, then you're warming up the hips and the shoulders, which are quite important, not just for everyday living, but for dragon boating as well. So let me just take it through again. There's six variations. Legs, I've mentioned this in other videos, can either be standard star jump legs, as in the frontal plane, abduction, adduction, or they can be marching. That's good if you have, like I have here, a light that sooner or later I'm gonna take out, or you may have some hip issues as well. So you can be either marching or you can be jumping. The 10, the 10, the six variations at the top, why am I thinking 10, is standard star jumps, and bear in mind they meet at the top, that's a star jump, or if you can only get that way up, but as far as you can get in that uh, range of motion. Number two is one to the front, one to the back, so we've got sagittal plane and frontal plane. Option three is two to the front, swing two to the top, two to the top, two to the top, as we use go with the legs. Option four, is open up the chest, palms down to palm up. Okay, option five is like you're skipping with a jump rope or a skipping rope, but notice I'm interlocking the hands. And option six is a spotty dog, because all the leg movement, if you think about it, is uh, frontal plane. So we turn to the side, sagittal plane, and it's this sort of situation, stride jumps, and we're doing the spotty dogs as in the old puppet from the 60s or the 70s. So that is your six variations. That's your warm-up. You can do other warm-ups as well, of course. Moving on, that should take about 60, 90 seconds. Moving on, next exercise is posterior chain stretch. And this is, I'll show you the top and the bottom, all the way up, all the way down, out to the side, stationary arm, out to the side. So it's an oblique stretch. And just to move back a bit, all the way down, you'll get, you'll get down towards the ground, and as your back loosens up, you can get a bit further. Okay, all the way up, two, three, four, and it will loosen up, so that's part of your warm up as well, okay? Moving on from there, so what I'm suggesting is, you warm up for about 90 seconds, and then each of the exercises I would suggest, Tabata style would be do it for a minute, and then have 20 seconds off, move on to the next one, yeah? And you can, you can increase the intensity by increasing the time, or some of these exercises you can do with weights. Now most of these you can do with either a pipe, or a paddle, or a broomstick, or as we do in the sessions, a resistance band, okay? Stuff you should find around the house. If you don't have a resistance band, you can use a bit of bungee shock cord, and I've got a video elsewhere on the channel about improvised stuff as well, and you're that's all free to access and will be forever. So next one, this is that's number two. So we've got star jumps, then we've got posterior chain stretch, just to recap, all the way up, all the way down, rotate out, rotate out. Four parts, unlock the knees, don't have the knees locked out. The next one is a body rotation. If you're using a paddle, it's gonna cramp your style and your shoulders if you try and hold it in. That, that, that actually almost hurts me doing that. So with a paddle, 130 centimeters, Either hold the end if you've got shorter arms, or just hang it over so you're just clamping your um, wrists, and then we're swinging through, okay? So try and keep your wings spread, so to speak. I mean, that'll do there, when you think about it, all I've got is the paddle suspended there, or the pipe, and I'm swinging through, I keep my hips square, and my legs, my toes are facing you, okay? Trying to move through 180 degrees, range of movement. Okay, there we go, body rotation. Overhead arc, sorry, overhead, up and over rather, let's get my words right, over, up and over, and then a big bell, okay? So we, once again, we take it up and over to a point there, and then we're bending at the waist, posterior, not posterior, it's a posterior chain stretch, but it's a, a hip flexor stretch as well, okay? So two part movement, three if you do the over and back is two, okay? And once again, we're stretching out the, the back, but also you can feel it in the hamstrings as well. Try and keep your head up when you do it, rather than 
dropping your head down. So keep your spine neutral as you bend over, okay? There we go, next one is the overhead arc. Now, the shorter version I call the take that's, like you had a take that concert or a boy's own concert or something like that. But try and extend it a little bit if you can. Notice I'm trying to bend it down, it's an overhead arc, and I'm trying to get it down to behind my knee, or a bit further, so I don't compromise it, but I'm stretching all the way down my right side when I bend to the left. So let gravity do the work, up and then stretch down to there. Really feel that stretch through the core and into the obliques on my left side, okay? So it's accentuating that stretch, but I'm moving once again in this frontal plane. So I'm not going down here. I get my head up, I'm trying to describe an arc, same as all side bend exercises, as if I've got a plane of glass in front of me and behind me, and that's limiting my movement. If you're like me and you're getting old, my hips are slightly bent. When I go down, I actually looks like I'm corkscrewed a little bit. Okay, that's just old, it's old parachuting injury actually, but there you go. That's the way it goes. Okay, but so I'm just more flexible one side than the other. Okay, so that's body rotations. Overhead, arc, overhead squat is the next one. You're all familiar with squats. And if I forget the pipe for a minute, so we're sitting back and we're driving up. Sitting back, driving up. Like we're sitting down on a seat and then we're driving the ground away with our heels, okay? By introducing either a stick or a paddle overhead or a resistance band, either full length or doubled over, whichever suits, what I'm actually doing is creating a second stretch in the upper part of my body as well. So I'm tensing when I go down for the squat and I'm keeping a bit of tension. If I use a shorter band, I can keep a bit more tension on it as well. So I'm positively tensioning the body as I go down and up and stretching out the core as well. And in fact, the lats, which insert into here, as you know. Okay, so it's quite a good multi-point stretch. And like I say, don't force it back. Let it naturally come forward, however your body allows it to. Not down here. Over your head, but say, it's gonna, it's gonna come forward a little bit, depending on your particular body mechanics and dynamics. So there we go, overhead squat, once again. About a minute of that, or whatever interval you do, 40 seconds, or a minute rest, Tabata style. Okay, there we go, so that's your overhead squat. Next one is the, the halo. Now I've developed this a little bit. The old halo was basically circumnavigating your head. But again, if you stretch it out, and you're doing a high halo, then you're getting a better core stretch out of it. So you're reaching up as far as you can get, and then you're doing the highest halo you can. You see what I mean? Better work for your shoulder as well. So there you go, there's the high halo. Once again, with a band, ordinary halos that we've been doing for some month, or double it over, and we've got a smaller, higher halo that way, yeah? It's like the circumduction exercise we do with the shoulders. So there's the halos. Um, dragon boat hip flex. Now, it's important to bear this one in mind. It doesn't matter, this is not an exercise about which leg you've got in front. Lots of debate about that across the world. That's a different issue, and park that for the minute, please. What we're looking to do here, irrespective of what leg I've got in front, you need to be stable and have one leg in front for this exercise to work. There's two variations to this. The first variation is a straightforward hip flex. You can, I'm just gonna change the angle of the camera so you can see that, excuse me. There we go. There we go, that's better. So the first hip flex, irrespective of which leg you've got in front, is up and over, up, and back. You actually may be extending more than you would in a dragon boat, but the point is flexing the hips, that's what this is all about. So up and over, up and back. And it does work the other way as well, because we're flexing the hips. Up and over, up and back, okay? Opening up the hips and then reaching forwards. Bearing in mind, when we're moving forwards, we're looking at the eye line as well. So I would suggest bringing the paddle up to the eye line rather than leaning out the body and going off balance. But that's dragon boat specific as well. 
The second variation is two stretches. Now obviously when we paddle, most traditions have the back hand not going further forward or further backwards than the hip. And that's true of I think, mo everybody. In canoeing it's different because the canoeing, the, the, there's a steering phase of the stroke. Now this is sort of taps into that. Up and over, up and back, that's the first part of the stretch. The second part of the stretch is a posterior elevation of the arm to stretch there. So all we're doing, if you think about it, I'm just swatching, swatching um, changing distances or changing positions from my back hand to my front end. So I've got that, and this is just a separate stretch. Okay, stretching up, I can feel that in the lat, I can feel it in the tricep, and I'm activating or mobilizing the shoulder as well. Okay, so you could get a two part stretch out of the same exercise, but know that we're not suggesting you paddle a boat like that. It's just like a technical drill where you sort of overemphasize some aspect of what you're doing. So that's another variation for that. Dragon boat hip flex, both sides are good anyway, whether or not you paddle or are familiar with both sides padding. It just makes you a, a better all round paddler if you're familiar both sides. Okay, there we go. Moving on, um, I'm gonna move the camera back. Doorknob and back scratch. Now you're familiar with this one. I think we've done it a few times where, hold for a minute, the doorknobs exercise. You can either do it both moving forward, both moving back. Once again, that horizontal rotation or opposition, okay? Another good one for backs is to see how far your, you can get your hand up your back. So to combine the two, I can have my paddle, won't work with the band obviously, so that hand is up horizontal and we're rotating it. So that's great as a stretch, but we can double the impact of the stretch by just pushing this hand up the back, and now the stretch goes away across, all the way across the shoulders. So with the one hand, I'm rotating, it's slow, it's controlled, just maximizing that range of movement, and I'm pushing this hand up the back as far as it will go, but not, not over straining. Okay, so I'm just getting two stretches up for the power of the price of one, basically. Okay, and then do that for the period, be that 40 seconds. Now I can get my left hand further up, so you may be more flexible on one side. I say when you get to my age, 58, then you get all sorts of previous injuries cutting in. Okay, same thing again. So it's full range of movement, so let the paddle, I've only worked about half a kilo, help you to turn. You can use bigger weights, but this is really principally or primarily about range of movement, flexibility, mobility, as per the FAME uh, series anyway. And you can add strength by adding weight, okay? Do it with a small weight bar or something if you want to. But get the basic movement first and build up that joint strength and stability first before you start progressively overloading into weight and longer time. So there we go. So what have we got? We've got the doorknob and then we've got the lateral stick stretch. Now, imagine I've got a paddle in my hand or a stick, which I have. Left hand, let go of the left hand. My knuckles are facing upwards and I let this rotate around. Okay, so I'm holding it there. And then I grab the stick and pull the stick in from there, okay? A little bit of tension on the arm, but not overdoing it. Okay, and what I'm doing, watch the light, is rotating laterally, outwards, okay? Don't overdo it, we're just increasing the mobility, building the joint strength. Same the other side, grip, knuckles facing upwards, it rotates around, so it's vertical, but parallel to my upper arm, lower arm rather, perpendicular to my upper arm, I'm just once again levering off against in that direction. Okay. And hold that thought. Last one before I move on is gonna be the, like the back scratch, it's a back lever. In this case, holding it, just levering off my shoulder blades and I'm levering the arm away. Now it's not bouncing, it's a pulse, maybe 15 seconds, same as the previous exercise. Hold it for 15 seconds and then release. So you probably do four stretches in a minute. Hold it and release. Just, just generating or promoting that range of movement. Okay, both sides. 
and you can do it with a band as well. If you have a band, it's a slightly better stretch with a band because what I'm doing is I'm getting a stretch on my tricep and upper arm as well. Okay, same sort of thing, but I don't overdo it. Just take it easy, develop it, pulse, 15, 20 seconds and off and on again. And over time, you develop the stretch. You're not going to get massively strong or flexible in a sort of session. It's one of those daily stretches that over time will just increase that whole joint stability, joint strength and range of movement. Okay. Okay, part two of the Donegal Dragons uh, session. This is the floor exercises. I'll just take you through these. So the first one is a glute bridge and leg raise. Glute bridge, feet flat on the ground, shoulder blades in contact, straight line as best as you can do between my knees and my shoulders and try and get my glutes tight and then pushing my hips up towards the, the, the sky. Okay, hands can be there or there where you want, nice and stable, but try and push those hips up and keep that part of my core of my body through to my knees, up to my shoulders, nice and tense. That's the glute bridge side of things. Okay, we can develop that with the resistance band later on. Okay, in fact, I'll show you that now. If you use the resistance band, stirrup, okay, stirrup, whoop, Get it around the leg and keep it around the leg. So two legs in stirrups, up and over, there. And then if we just come up into the glute bridge then, it's like having a disc weight or something, a bit of resistance pushing you down. So you've got to work a little bit harder to get your pelvis up towards the sky, okay? That's just for the glute bridge. It's not going to work for the second part. So let's lose the band for a minute. So glute bridge, then we go into leg raise. So from there, up and over, or as far over as you can get. You see what I mean? So I'm stretching out, one, the posterior chain, two, flexing the hips. If you can't get up and over there, then just come to a leg raise. That's more of an abs exercise, but it's still getting the legs off the ground, okay? So glute bridge into leg raise, and hold those for a period, maybe a minute or so, or as far as you can get, or glute bridge into leg raise, stretch off the back. Okay, so two variations of that. Next one is what we used to call dynamic Superman. It's probably got a different name now. So the Superman plank, if you like, is once again, hand below the shoulder, knee below the hips. So I'm gonna go on to my, so I can see, you can see. So my um, left knee and right hand, okay? And then that's the superman position. But what I do is I flex and extend. So that's nice and straight. I'm pointing with my finger, pointing with the toe, bring it in. So I bring my, my uh, elbow in to my knee, let it cross over. So crunching really, that's the flexion. And then extending. What I tend to do is five of each. So slow and deliberate, bring it right away in, stretch the back and then point. And then after five or whatever the number might be or a period, once again, locate the hand below the shoulder, knee below the hip, the hip, and so it is the other side. Nice neutral spine there, draw it in, so it at least crosses over or as far as you can get, and then point it out. So don't rush it, really develop it, flex and extend. There you go, so call that a dynamic superman. Next one is a lat and oblique fly. Now let's go, I'll cover the, uh, this is the development of plank if you like, I mean the plank, let's cover that first. High plank, low plank. You can either hold that position, bear in mind keep your spine neutral. So a straight, that's not a plank, that's not a plank. As straight as you can, I try and keep my head up. If I drop my head, it tends to sag down a little bit over time. Or you can do walk in the plank. Or you might do 30 seconds of high plank Walk it up and down for 30 seconds or 30 seconds of low plank or move it up, okay? From there, if I spread my legs a little bit, keep this low plank position, we can make it into a fly, lat and oblique fly. So that's straight up as far as I can, or in fact I'm trying to reach beyond vertically up and then at the same time, well at the same time, in the later mover, just sweep round. So I'm stretching the lats both ways, up, and over. And the other way is obviously up 
and under and through. It's a little bit of a strain on your forearm, so you might want to stick a cushion or something under there, but nothing that's going to move around too much. So actually, if you're outside, it's better on the grass or something, but bear in mind, if you've got some cushioning, you need some purchase to avoid your slipping. And the other thing is to, if you spread your legs at the back, then when you're cupping up, up and over, it's a little bit less stable if you're doing that and there's a chance you're gonna fall over. So a bit of spread, you still get the stretches in the right place. And in fact, by spreading your legs, you get a bit more of a stretch in your quads as well, for what it's worth. Okay, so we've done plank. Two more, um, three more in fact. Reverse plank. I actually prefer this. So what I'm doing is pointing my toes. Now my hands are splayed out. You can't quite see that. Splayed out that way rather than that way. So I open up the shoulders. Point the toes, try and straighten the back. And once again, keep the pelvis up. So that's a reverse plank. Nice and straight. Be very difficult to walk that one. So that's just a really straight ISO hold. Another one is frog steps. So we're going from here to hip flex exercise, from here, and what we're doing is stepping up and stepping up. You can obviously see why it's so called. You can go into frog hops, but let's leave it simple for frog steps at the moment, but the, the development is maybe 30 seconds of frog steps, one side then the other, and then go with 30 seconds for frog hops. But like I say, that's the next phase on. Steps is good. If you can only get up to here, that's fine, but then get a good degree of flexibility. Once again, flex in the hips, time in, time out. It's that movement over time that's gonna develop it. Okay, so frog steps, reverse plank, plank, cat stretch, and that's it. So the cat stretch, which we've covered, once again, the neutral position, hand below the uh, shoulder, knee below the hip. We've got the happy cat position. What I'm calling dancing cat, which is really, this goes in or it links in with the shoulder exercises. And what we're doing is trying to move the shoulders to its full range of motion. So we're keeping the hands contact with the ground, putting different weight, angles, rotations, that sort of stuff. We really feel it in the core as well. It's a sad cat. Draw the tummy in, arch the back, chin on chest. So like an angry cat, exactly like that. So we've done happy cat, neutral spine, dancing cat, sad cat, three-legged cat. It's another lat and oblique stretch. Scoop down and up. And what I'm following up, what I'm trying to do is get this shoulder down towards the ground to accentuate the stretch. I'll show you the other side in a minute. And then look up in the direction that the hand is going. Then neutralize, get that below the shoulder again and then three-legged cat again. And you see I'm scooping down and up, trying to drop this left shoulder towards the ground and looking up to accentuate that stretch, like looking over my left shoulder, my right shoulder in fact. There we go. And the last one is, I'm calling it the uh, sleeping cat, but it's actually the child's pose for prayer position. Stretch out the spine, stretch out the lats at the back, and you can, if you get a bit cramped, ease it off, but what I'm trying to do is push these shoulders down towards the ground. Okay, and walk that hand forward to increase the stretch. And then ease off. And what I tend to do with that is I go through the whole thing, probably about 10, 15, maybe 20 seconds each phase, and I go through the whole thing uh, three, five times, that sort of thing, yeah? But these are daily stretches, well, they're maintenance stretches. You can use them part of a routine, but these are gonna build core strength, core stability, joint strength, increased blood flow. And so when you put heavier work, either in the gym, paddling, or normal daily life, it's in a better condition and it's better tuned to respond to the demands you put upon it. Okay, that's it, have a lovely day. And in the words of that song that I keep forgetting, uh, be young, be foolish, be happy, but be safe as well. Cheers.